This is AIR. Artists in Residence Broadcasting. Coming to you once a week from New York City. Uh, this is John Cullum here, and this is Emily Franco, my wife. And? And what? Are you ready for a big conversation? Uh, well, Wandering into the past? Oh, gosh. Back to Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, dear. You don't go back that way. That's that? down south. Way down south. Smoky Mountains, where I met you. I want to know, mm -hmm. for our readers yep. and for the people who view this. Yes, ma'am. How John Cullum learned to sing. I wish you hadn't asked me that, Emily. Who taught you to sing? I Did you take singing lessons? Oh, yes. I took, I took quite a bit of lessons. You know how that happened? Yeah. How? Well, it's... It's a kind of a complicated story. The doctor that I had who brought me into this world, Dr. Platt, sister, Platt, Bess, Dr. Platt. Platt. Thank he, you, Dr. Platt. Thank you. I'm yes. glad you brought him into this world. Right. <laughs> um, he had a sister named Bessie Platt, and she was the organist at one of the largest churches in Knoxville, um, the uh, Henry Street Methodist Church. And somehow or another, she, she heard about me singing in the Knoxville High School Choir. I was the president of the choir. You were the president of the choir? Of the Knoxville High School, but it was just a, it didn't mean I could sing any better than anybody else. It meant that I was more kind of popular, and they, I got, anyway, yeah, she go thought because I was the president of the choir that I could sing real well, so they invited me to join the, the choir, a paid singer. At the, and these were all very good paid singers. Paid singer? How much did you get paid? Um, uh, it was uh, uh, $30 a month, I think it was. Wow. Yeah, and um, I was the second, probably what they call the second baritone, and um, then and I would, I went in there, and I couldn't read music. I read by kind of position and figured it out, and uh, but they, then they soon found out that I couldn't read. And then when when I started to sing, the first time I tried to sing a solo, um, I was so nervous that I kind of sang a quarter of a tone sharp and. Uh, my hands shook, and you know, when I had to, anyway, they sent me to a wonderful teacher, uh, Mrs. Bruce Leslie, uh, Lillian Leslie, Lillian Leslie, and uh, she was a great teacher, and she gave me a lot of lessons. But I didn't get, very, I wasn't a very good singer, and I was always very nervous. Did you practice scales and things? Oh yeah, and I learned uh, Italian songs, and you know, to the an Italian style. song. You know, our sing songs. me an Italian song. Non vendrai forfalone amoroso, no te gior, no gior, no girando, delle belle torano il riposo. Narcisetto, don't you know no more? You're hired. Oh, okay, well, they, they finally fired me because I, but uh, they said, as they kept me on for a while, I said, we'll keep you here for a while as long as you take these lessons from Miss Leslie. And so I used the uh, $30, I think it was $40. And took lessons from his Leslie. And then again, I got hired by Pop Hamilton, who should have known better because he, he was the choir director of the Knoxville High School Choir. And, but he must have forgotten that I wasn't a very good singer because he hired me for the same reason. And I got fired for the same reason. I was, I was too you nervous. You sang sharp? Well, I, I just didn't have a very good solo voice. Uh, I was very nervous about singing solo, particularly in a church. I was holding the music and all that stuff. I had always just sung songs when I felt like it, and uh, I um, and that I, I did take the lessons. And when I came to New York, I went to auditions uh, as a singer because you couldn't you couldn't get auditions in straight plays. Uh, so, but you could always go to an open audition, and they used to make me so nervous. I I, I would usually have a little tipple before I went. You mean you drank before uh, auditions? Yes, if you have to put it. That's Say right. it. I had a belt or two before I'd go to them. And that got me through. But I only I only usually had to sing the last... And then you studied with Sidney Osborne. That's right. Well, you know how that happened. They, I, was, I, I got hired in my first musical to be the understudy to Richard Burton. And because they'd seen me do something in the park with Shakespeare, and they thought he's a great Shakespearean actor, and so that's why they hired me. And then, when we got into rehearsals, I was understudying Richard, and I'd run and study Roddy McDowell, and 
Alan J. Lerner came to me and said, I want you to, to audition again for the understudy to Bob Goulet. And I said, well, uh, I, I, don't want, I can't sing that well. And he said, no, you got to audition. And I said, oh, well, all right. So I sang, and then he came up to me and said, John, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you, you don't sing well enough. John, I, I remember the first time you sang for me. Yeah. If ever I would leave you, go to sing it once for me. If ever I would leave you, it wouldn't be in summer. Knowing you in summer, I never would go. Okay. All right, well. You're hired. Well, I, I should have warmed up before that. Well, thank you very much for talking to us about this, John. Everybody wanted to know, how did John Cullen learn to sing? Well, I didn't So, know. this is John and Emily signing off. We'll see you next week. This is AIR. See you next week.